Hello and welcome to another edition of Be Still My Soul. Uh, today we are looking at Psalm 29. A number of years ago I was driving along the road when a thunderstorm came upon us and I, all of a sudden all the cars on the road slowed down and stopped. The rain was pelting down on the, the windscreen and the roof of the car making a, a, a real noise. Uh, and then the thunder and the lightning clapped and flashed. Actually, at one point, uh, they did it at the same time. It left me in awe and wonder at the power of nature. Well, in Psalm 29, David lifts our eyes to the Lord who is over the storm, who is over, the na over nature, as he celebrates the power of God in the wonder of creation, especially the thunderstorm. I do wonder whether today, one of the, uh, that we, we lack a sense of awe and wonder at the greatness of God. Well, this psalm helps to rectify that. There's three things I want us just to briefly see from this psalm. Uh, first of all, I want us to see a call to worship. Verses one and two, ascribe to the Lord our heavenly beings, that's angels. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Worship the Lord in the splendour of holiness. Three times these heavenly beings, these angels, are called on to worship the Lord. They're called on to give the glory and the strength to the Lord's name. The Lord's name was how Israel had gained their victories. His name is the revelation of who he is, uh, of what he's done. Remember, he gave the name to Moses back in Exodus 3. This is my name, the Lord. And then said to Pharaoh in, Ex in the book of Exodus, By, you will know me as the Lord through these signs, through these miracles, through, through these plagues, through the deliverance of my people. You see, worship should be towards the Lord in the splendour of holiness. That is, the Lord is holy and his holiness merits worship. David is so overcome with uh, the vision he has of the Lord that he calls on the most powerful beings in the universe, angels themselves, to bow down and give their glory and strength to, to the Lord alone. And if they are to do it, then how much more human beings? Now, why does he do this? What, what's motivated? What has he seen of the Lord? Well, we see here in verses 3 to 9, a cause for worship. Uh, David describes in verses 3 to 9 the effects of a thunderstorm. Perhaps he's been watching one approach as he's penned these words. A powerful thunderstorm coming in from the west, from the Mediterranean Sea, uh, and then hitting land and sweeping down from, from Lebanon in the north across the country, causing havoc until he reaches the desert in the south. And as David looks at this storm, as he, as he sees the power of nature, he sees it as an illustration of the power of God himself. He calls the, the thunder the voice of the Lord. As he hears the, the powerful thunder, he hears, as it were, the Lord's powerful voice. David traces his voice in the path of this storm. First of all, the storm begins at sea, verses 3 and 4. The verse, voice of the Lord is over the waters, waters of the Mediterranean. The God of glory thunders the Lord over many waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. The Mediterranean Sea is a powerful force with powerful waves, but the Lord is sovereign over the storm and his voice even more powerful. And then second, the storm comes down from the north, verse 5 and 6, the voice of the Lord breaks the cedars. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon to skip like a calf and Syrian like a young wild ox. The, the storm hits land in the north and, 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 and sweeps across Israel. First of all, Lebanon and Syrian, two of the mountains uh, north of Israel, skip and dance at the power of the storm, in the presence of God. The, the, 
great mountains as they are, they appear small and insignificant. Shaken by God himself. And as a storm comes down, it brings chaos, lashing the trees, bringing thunder and lightning, fire and mighty wind. It's not surprising that this was a psalm for Red and uh, Pentecost. And then finally, third, the storm reaches the desert in the south. Verse 7, the voice of the Lord flashes forth flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord makes the deer give birth and strips the forest bare. And in his temple, all cry glory. Even here in the desert, nature is made to dance and, and shake. And the response that angels are to have, that we are to have, at the power of God is awe and wonder. A, 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 a humility, but a humble joy. See, from God's heavenly temple, there comes a cry of glory. Glory at the presence of God. These verses here remind me of one of the most popular hymns in Britain. One of the, our favourite hymns at St Clement's. O oh Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder, consider all the worlds thy hand hath made. I see the stars, I hear the mighty thunder, thy power throughout the universe displayed. Then sings my soul, my Saviour God to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Saviour God to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. Finally, David finishes with a comfort that we can receive from worship. David concludes in verses 10 and 11 with the kingship of God. The Lord, he sees, sits over the flood. Verse 10, the Lord sits enthroned over the flood. The Lord sits enthroned as king forever. May the Lord give strength to his people. May the Lord bless his people with peace. The word uh, for flood here is the word used for Noah's flood. The ultimate example and expression of the power of natural forces unleashed by God for his purposes. That storm was the instrument, God's instrument of judgment on the world. But also salvation for Noah and his family. Judgment for the world, salvation for his people. I think that's why David has been referring to God as the Lord throughout this psalm. 18 times he's used the name of God, Yahweh, the Lord. The Lord who's great in power. The Lord who rules the world. But the Lord also who in the midst of a chaotic world in which dreadful things happen, cares for his people, loves his people delivers his people like he did Israel out of Egypt. A God who, as we trust him, is on our side and is our help. And we can know he's on our side and he's our help for certain because he has sent his son Jesus Christ. And when he sent Jesus Christ into the world, what happened to him? He, well, he experienced on the cross the storm of God's wrath. The ultimate storm of the anger of God for sin. So that you and I, as we trust him, can be reconciled to God again. Can have peace with God. And can know that peace with God throughout our lives, even in the midst of the storms of life. One person described it like this. This closing word, peace, at the end of the psalm. It's like a rainbow arch over the whole psalm. The beginning of the psalm shows heaven open while its close, uh, while its close shows us his victorious people upon earth. Blessed with peace in the midst of the terrible utterance of his wrath. Glory in the highest is the beginning of the psalm. Peace on earth is the close. We can know that peace as we see 
God's glory and God's power. Thank you so much for tuning in and listening. We're looking at Psalm 30 next week. God bless.